Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video and taking a break from my reviews of the Marvel Legends Absorbing Man Bath Wave. As you may remember in the previous episode of Confessions of an Ebayaholic, which featured the 6 inch Marvel Legends X Men Deadpool knockoff I scored on eBay, I promised that I'd be taking a look at the 3 and 3 quarter inch version of the character. Well, my friends, that time is now. And as you can see from the price tag on this, I picked it up for £15, which is kind of pricey but then I got it out of the toy store in London, so you know London prices. And if you've been watching my toy hunting videos, you will have seen me pluck this very action figure right off the peg. In fact, the pegs of the toy store were absolutely loaded with this wave, yet if you're feeling a bit more thrifty and want to save a few quid, I have since seen this wave at the Entertainer for £12. Then as we look at the card back, other action figures pictured are Gold Ultron, Emma Frost, and Scarlet Spider. And the bio reads, the Merc with a math, Deadpool cuts to the chase with his sharp wit and deadly blades. So here he is out of packaging and here's me jumping on the free and three quarter inch bandwagon just as everybody else is jumping off of it. As it does seem like of late Hasbro have picked the six inch scale Marvel Legends as their favourite child, leaving this scale to slowly limp on gasping for air. Now primarily as a six inch scale collector I honestly can't say that breaks my heart, yet also as a six inch scale collector it's not too long ago that the shoe was on the other foot, so if you you are a fan of Marvel Legends, smaller cousin, I can understand how you feel right now. So here I am spreading my love your way in the form of this review. Now the Deadpool we have here in his X-Men uniform is a redeco of the Deadpool that came in the Deadpool core box set back in 2013 as an SDCC exclusive I believe, which in turn comes from 2009 and the Deadpool from the line that accompanied the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie. So yeah, while the line that accompanied Accompanied the movie gave us this, the actual movie gave us this. But hey, for his sins, at least Ryan Reynolds seems to be committed to correcting the cinematic course of Deadpool. Well, those are the movies, and this is his X-Men uniform from the comics. Well, an issue of the comics, maybe two max. Yet here it is, reproduced years later, not only here, but also in Marvel Legends, Funko Pops, and more. Perhaps it's that popular of a look, or perhaps just a look that's cost-effective for these toy companies to replicate. Something I do like here compared to the Legends one is that most of the yellow ribbing you see on the costume is sculpted raised in relief. Not that I should credit Hasbro too much for that as it's sculpt that on the original red Deadpool demarcates the red and black parts of the costume so really it's a happy byproduct of the reuse. And I like how the swords are secured to his back it has a nice wide dynamic X splay to them. Speaking of the swords let's remove them. They're secured in there really quite snugly and you can see some detailed sculpt on the handle there. Yeah I'm Unlike the Marvel Legends one, I guess on this smaller scale they can't commit a deco to accentuate that sculpt. Now when I looked at the Legends version I was very critical of his hands as they seemed to be moulded to hold the guns he came with and not the swords he came with. And that meant that the hands had only the loosest grip on the swords, yet in contrast this version maintains a really nice tight grip on those swords and he looks pretty cool posed with them, although we will get to articulation later, yet he doesn't have double jointed elbows, meaning you can't get him into really dynamic sword wielding poses. Other accessories include a dagger which you can see came out of the packaging pretty bent looking like it came out on the losing end of a fight with Colossus's still hard body. A nice detail that we get here from being added to the SDCC Deadpool is that he comes with his right hand with a pinky raised, which is etiquette for the most finest of tea drinkers, or in the case of Deadpool, etiquette for wielding a dagger or whatever else weapon he chooses, which here also include a big ass shoulder cannon and also this handgun that looks like it would suit the hand of Han Solo more than Deadpool, but here he is with it in hand. Now of late there has 
has been some pressure on toy companies for children's toys not to come with realistic firearms. Because, you know, that's an easier problem to solve than actually tackling the problem of why people in this society shoot and kill other people. And the end result of that pressure is that the weapons that toys come with tend to have more of a fantasy look about them, which I think is what we're getting here. Interestingly, with this being a body that now dates back six to seven years, we can use it to trace the changing of times. As on his leg, he does have a holster for a handgun, yet if we try and put this laser blaster into it, we can see it's clearly way too big. And on previous versions of this Deadpool, he did come with a smaller handgun that fit in there. In fact, the larger six inch scale Marvel Legends version did come with a much more realistic looking handgun, yet despite the difference in scale, comparing the two we can see they're pretty much the same size. And speaking of size, here's his whopping shoulder cannon, which I've been told has been repurposed from a G.I. Joe action figure. But hey, if you are going to give goofy big ass weapons to a character, then it's better Deadpool than anybody else, as he does have some inherent goofiness to him. Now, as promised, looking at articulation and his head rotates side to side, he does look down very slightly, but then only really looks up to return to a facing forward position. Oh, and I almost forgot he comes with a second interchangeable head. I think I blocked it out because since I saw the second head in the packaging, I've been living in fear of removing this one. As on this scale, there is some innate fragile fiddliness. And yeah, you can see there is some stress mark there to that peg where I removed it. And that doesn't make me completely confident about getting this second head on. No, you know what? I'm going to place this on my space heater to loosen the plastic to enable that head swap. And finally, here we are. I do like this head sculpt. Well, in theory, I like it. With the mask raised enough to reveal the maniacal grin surrounded by that scar-tissued skin. It certainly should be tickling my fancy, yet in practice I find the sculpt is too ambitious for this scale and ends up just looking soft and messy. Back to the articulation and the arm rotates at the shoulder. It moves up to more than a right angle to the body. Then there's rotation at the elbow and this is hinged, yet sadly articulation articulates the lower arm to less than a right angle to the upper arm. Then there's rotation at the wrist, yet no wrist hinge. In lieu of waist rotation, he has a rotating diaphragm joint, and this also moves very slightly forward, and equally it moves very slightly back. At the hips, his legs move out to the side a real decent amount. Then you have to finagle the ball joint of the hip to move the leg forward. It moves quite far and then finagle it again and it moves back quite far. There's upper leg rotation followed by a double jointed knee. Then at the ankle, seems like there is a hinge there, but I'm honestly scared to articulate it. Then there's rotation of the foot, but no ankle pivot. Boo. So here he is finally side by side with his six inch Marvel Legends counterpart. Now of course I'm going to side with the Legends one, not that I should condone buying knockoffs on eBay, but even including shipping it cost me a third less than this smaller one, and for the money literally bought me much more. Yet if the smaller scale is all that floats your boat, worry thee not as you're still getting a pretty decent Deadpool here. On this scale, Hasbro have been cost-cutting by phasing out some of the articulation, yet with this being an older mold, you are guaranteed superior articulation. And as the saying goes, you're getting an oldie, but a goodie. As might also be true here with the Colossus, which I also picked up, so stay tuned for that review. In the meantime, click the video on the left if you miss Confessions of an Ebayaholic featuring the Marvel Legends six-inch scale knockoff X-Men Deadpool. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.